And if you did counterfeit, they gave the death, they allowed the death penalty for counterfeiting. But here today, what do we do? You would go to jail if you counterfeited a federal document or, the, or, a, uh, or a currency, which is fine and dandy. That's uh, obviously fraud. But why are we so complacent to turn the counterfeit machine over to a few individual, usually one, who gets to counterfeit the currency of the world, the dollar, in secrecy, and they spend it without any supervision? They ought to have, they ought to lose their sovereign immunity as well. What about those individuals in both parties for a good many decades now who totally ignore the Constitution and, and take us to war illegally, without declaration of war? Why, why are they allowed to do this? Why do we have a CIA that gets involved in overthrow of governments, rigging elections around the world? Then we sit back and we wonder, why do they hate us? Because we're involved and we're bombing and killing people. Yeah. You know, one of the big issues going on today is the issue of, of torture. We now uh, have become a nation known for torturing. Pictures have been out there early on when the Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo pictures came out. We don't see them anymore. Nobody talks about them. Torture still goes on. We uh, farm it out to other countries. But those pictures circulate, circulate around the Muslim world. And believe me, they didn't like it. What would we think if somebody was torturing American people around the world? I mean, it would infuriate us. So what do we do? We find we have the information that came up and they suggested maybe we ought to look into it and this administration was supposed to do that. So they started investigating. They had some evidence and the CIA was involved. And guess what? The CIA destroyed all the evidence. Yeah. And this administration will not pursue it. They've excused them and said, that's it, we can't find the evidence, there will be no prosecution. Not one single prosecution, not one challenge to people who claim that, oh no, they're not really torturing. But it was a policy. As long as torture is a policy of America, America cannot remain great. Change you can believe in. You know, just uh, just this last week, we had this uh, revelation in in a court. You know, the uh, court with Ahmed Galani. He was uh, he was indicted. He was in Guantanamo, and Obama sent him up to New York. They, and people who didn't want that to be done, where they were very worried about this. Oh, there'll be riots in the streets and chaos and all that. Nobody even knew the trial was going on. The problem didn't come until after the trial. He was charged with like 285 counts and he was convicted on one. So those who don't believe in open trials and uh, rule of law were screaming. They're going nuts. How horrible. But what, did, what was the punishment for this one conviction he had? He got a life sentence. Yeah. But they said, no, it wasn't good enough. We don't want this. We can't have these civilian trials. We have to have secret military trials. But the important thing is, is do we want to set a precedent like that? That is what is wrong. We can't. We have to have them live under the law. So we can't have these courts acting outside the law. And this is what is happening today. And uh, I, I just am uh, very disturbed that uh, so many people uh, can support issues like that. And uh, we, we now have uh, a, a policy Frankly, it's been around for a while, but frankly admitted in our committees today that it is a clear-cut policy that the American president and the uh, attorney general can designate American citizens to be assassinated. Fascism. Now, these guys are probably, the ones. there's three or four Americans on there. Nobody here is going to be on that list at least for a year or two. <laughs> but... Just the idea that they can do it. But they say, well, this is a bad guy. Yeah, it probably is a bad guy. But the law is supposed to protect the bad guys so that the good guys are never treated like a bad guy. But what they want to protect are secret prisons, 
and, and the secret uh, uh, judicial system at the uh, military courts and they don't want to lose their ability to torture. Now the reason the individual wasn't convicted on more crimes this week was because all the information came from torturing the guy. You know, and, he, and, and, and even, uh, he, he was probably very much involved, but he wasn't directly involved, he was indirectly involved. But they say, you can't do this in a civilian court. We have to keep it secret. It has to be military because they're all guilty. Guess what? Since 9-11, we have had 400 plus individuals who have been tried and convicted in civilian court. And, and there have been four convicted in military courts. And, that, and then the clamor now is, no, we can't depend on civilian courts. We have to have military courts. Very, very bad precedent. And uh, we must be, you know, aware of this so that we hopefully can get this stopped. You know, talking about giving um, sovereign immunity to our government officials, and I would remove it all, but what about giving immunity to the whistleblowers? They're the ones who need the immunity. We have a few brave souls, especially in the foreign policy area. It came up in Vietnam. It's come up more re recently, WikiLeaks. Information that technically, yes, they're breaking a rule, but what is the government doing? They're breaking the law. And they're doing these horrible things. So if we have an American citizen that is willing to take it, uh, take the consequences and practice civil disobedience and say, this is what our government's doing. Should he be locked up and in prison? No. Or should we, you know, see him as a political hero? Maybe he is a true patriot who reveals what's going on in government. Yeah. One of the things that I think motivates so many to do what uh, they have been doing at airports is we have come to believe, whether it's in economic sense or the physical sense, that the purpose of government is to make us safe. And uh, I know President Bush said this frequently and it evidently our current president believes the same thing. That the purpose of the government, my responsibility is to make you safe. It isn't. He doesn't take an oath of office. I promise to do anything conceivable, even disrespect the Constitution to make sure you're safe. It's not in there. That's not it. You take an oath to obey the law and enforce the law, and that the law is the Constitution. You take an oath to obey the Constitution. But this idea that government can make us safe, it causes moral hazard. Too many people believe it. Too many people for too many decades, for the last 70 or 80 years, have believed the lies of the government. They said, we will take care of you. We can take care of you through a welfare state from cradle to grave. We can spend money, borrow money, print money, and if people dare touch us, we'll go to war against them and everything, everybody's going to live happily ever after because we are the king penguins. We have all the wealth and we have the armies and everybody's dependent on us because we have the reserve currency of the world. But, you know, time is running out on that. And people are starting to realize government has failed. This is what the real message is in the last two to three years. The absolute awareness that government's incapable of taking care of you. And if they try to, the only thing they can do, they will fail at their effort, but they will take away your liberties. So what they do for us at the, or to us at the airports, uh, that doesn't make any safer. Do we need the TSA to be safe? No. You know, government, once again, the moral hazard dependent on the government before 9-11, who was in charge of security of airplanes? It was our government. Our government said, we're going to make you safe. So we, they had us checkpoints and the x-rays, but they had rules. Don't ever resist a hijacker and no guns on the airplane. Now, if I'd be running an airplane in a free society and I thought my job is to protect my customers, I would probably hire an expert from Brinks and ask them how they keep their money safe. And it's usually with a gun and an armored car, so what we needed, we needed tight doors on the airplanes and we needed a gun. As far as I'm concerned, I think that the uh, planners of terrorism against us have all forgotten about the airplane. They're laughing at us for doing the silly things over and over again. We're not any safer and uh, that we're doing to ourselves much more harm than the Al-Qaeda is doing to us. We're, we're our own worst enemies.
the Al Qaeda, the Al Qaeda do want to come here. They have their reasons for wanting to come here, but they, if they come here and commit an act. That is horrible. But the Al-Qaeda cannot invade us and change our constitution and change our laws. So we are obligated to obey the, and defend the constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And right now, I am convinced our domestic concerns are much greater than our foreign concerns. We're not going to be invaded, but we are going to have our liberties continually eroded unless we get a new generation of young people to grow up and say, listen, enough is enough. We want our freedoms back and we want to take care of ourselves and get the government off our backs and out of our wallet. You know, we, the, the, the TSA will claim, well, we've accomplished a lot that we haven't had an attack. And, and that's true, but I think it's basically because they did two things that should have been done even before 9-11. Uh, but uh, we're not safer overall because we haven't really changed anything. There's been so much achieved against us. So since 9-11, we've eroded our civil liberties. Um, we went over there to teach them a lesson with the loss of 6,000 American military people, 35,000 people who have been severely injured, and tens of thousands who have come back with post-traumatic stress syndrome, and that is what it's costing us. I mean, we are losing. Where is the punishment? The, we're punishing the American people. But you know, if we really want to punish and, and get rid of Al-Qaeda, we should think about how you get rid of the drug dealers. You get rid of the drug dealers by legalizing the drugs, and the drug dealers are gone. But if you want to get rid of Al-Qaeda, guess what it takes? You have to change the foreign policy. And nobody wants to do that. We're going to run out of money and maybe we have to, but hopefully your generation will say, we'll change the foreign policy right now. Just think of what the, the effort to recruit individuals so angry at us to, give, to commit suicide terrorism against us if we weren't over there in their countries. We're in all, all these countries and uh, how, many, how many people, you know, talking about the loss of American life, how many, how many foreigners have been killed? You know, just the other day, you know, again, one of our cruise missiles, our drone missiles, went into Pakistan. I mean, we're at war with Pakistan. It killed 30 people. Oh, oh, that's collateral damage. But you know what? Every bit of collateral damage invites another family to hate us. One of the, um, one of the greatest or the worst, I guess, worst achievements of the previous administration was to convince the American people that they come here to kill us because we're free and prosperous. That is total nonsense. If you continue to believe that, we can't solve our problems. The people, and there's been a few who have done serious studies about who and why, what motivates a suicide terrorist. And the number one cause is not religion. The number one cause is occupation of a foreign country. And that is why... That is why we ought to give up occupying foreign countries. It's not part of our constitution, and we ought to bring the troops home before the country is total bankrupt and the dollars, dollars destroyed, allow these funds to be spent uh, here, here at home. But to spend them overseas and continue this process, it is not going to do anything but build more enemies. So as we work hard, uh, we create more and more enemies. And there's no reason to suspect that we are are much safer as long as there are going to be more enemies uh, developing around around the world. So change in foreign policy doesn't seem to be that difficult for me. You know, I've been asked this question before, well, what would you do if you had anything to say with it about these troops overseas? How would you get out? Wouldn't it cause chaos? No, the chaos is because we're there. We just marched in those countries. Let's just march out. Hey! You know, this 